Well, Yoshua, welcome to Microsoft. I have been a great admirer of your work for so many years. Uh, it's really an honor to have you here on Redmond campus. It's my pleasure to be here. Let's uh, jump right in. So what excites you most now about AI and machine learning, and especially deep learning? Well, for the first time, we actually can talk about AI in a way that uh, is, is credible. I think uh, there's been a lot of promises for AI for decades, and finally we're starting to see things working, and it started with perception, but we're now moving into higher level cognition, and this is getting really exciting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And a lot of your work already impacted in the fields like the computer vision and the speech. So do you think the next one is going to be natural language? Absolutely. I think natural language is uh, one of the big challenges. I don't think that we're going to uh, solve it as easily as uh, uh, more perceptual tasks, because to solve natural language, of course, means to understand the world, have common sense. And so it's going to be a long road. But uh, we are making progress already. We've seen progress in many areas of, of natural language. And I think it's, uh, it's very exciting to be in this area. Yeah, it's definitely an area that Microsoft cares a lot about. You know, we, we actually uh, do a lot of software to help people to improve productivity, you know, emails, documents. Uh, it's, it's, it would be great to get your help, you know, do some interesting work together. Well, I'd love to have an influence uh, pushing in the directions in which I believe. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Yoshua, you live and work in Montreal. I believe you actually were born there, you know, raised up there. Uh, Montreal is such a beautiful city. I had a great pleasure to visit you over there. And now Montreal is becoming a hot spot, you know, for AI and the deep learning research. Why did you think, you know, it's happening there? Well, I think it's essentially because we we had this, we have this critical mass of very strong researchers, basic research. And uh, the university has believed in this area. We have grown the group. We have many faculties doing, doing that. And of course, we were there at the right time. We made the right bets uh, when, when neural nets were not popular. And, and now it's a virtual cycle of uh, uh, companies coming to Montreal, investment coming to the city, large funding from the government. Everything feeds the other. You know, I really admire your work there and you know, what you have done for the university and uh, for the city or even for the country of Canada. Uh, it's very inspiring to me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to ask you about the Maluba. You, know, yes. uh, you have been uh, uh, an advisor to Maluba, the start startup company yes. that we recently acquired. Uh, you have been uh, helping them, uh, giving them uh, advice, yes. directions they go. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the Maluba. Why were you excited uh, working with them? Uh, what's exciting there? Um, well, first of all, I think that maybe the most important is that they had a vision to focus on the fundamental questions for applying deep learning to language. And, uh, and I, I understand that Microsoft shares that vision, and this is, I guess, one reason why, why uh, Microsoft acquired Maluba. Um, and they tried to tackle some what I consider really hard problems to understand texts. Mm -hmm. For example, we worked on um, multiple levels of representation for not just for words, but for sentences at different time scales, working on uh, not the, the level of uh, different queries in, in, in dialogue. And, and uh, also, they, from the beginning, they had this uh, notion that it was important to bring in reinforcement learning and combine it with, with deep learning mm -hmm. for natural language. So, a lot of really um, uh, difficult, challenging directions, which I think have been uh, drawing a lot of uh, attention now around the world. Yeah. You know, we're very excited about, you know, having Maluba team join us, you know, uh, uh, working on, you know, machine reading, machine comprehension, and uh, with great applications of Microsoft software and the services. Yes, uh, I think I think that the, it's great to have companies like Microsoft focus on these uh, tasks like machine reading and machine comprehension, because these tasks have both very short-term applications, which would be worth a lot in many products and services, but at the same time, uh, involve long-term challenges about AI. So I think it's a great uh, opportunity to combine 
the forces of basic research that you have in Microsoft Research right. with uh, the skills in building Microsoft product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're very honored to have you uh, uh, spending uh, time with us and uh, uh, guiding us on certain areas you know, we should get into, should double down, have more investment. Uh, to your understanding about our company, you know, what do you think you know, at this moment we should do? You know, we just had this good chat. Uh, you just talked to our CEO Satya this morning. Yes, yes. Yeah, what advice did you give to him? <laughs> um, I believe that um, problems like machine comprehension, if, if we're not careful um, or dialogue, could lead us into short-term fixes, taking current technology, um, but people have really to realize that we are far from human level uh, AI, that there are so many fundamental missing elements in what we're doing to reach the point where uh, machines will be really able to com comprehend what we do at the same level as human. And in order to tackle these, we have to think out of the box to do a lot of basic research exploratory to explore things like um, having computers um, interact with the world, interact with people through dialogue or other means in order to discover how things work and how they can influence uh, aspects of the world to discover what are the underlying concepts that, that explain it. So your advice is that we should take a long-term view that yes. you know tackle those difficult AI problems, yes. leverage Microsoft research and uh, what we're already doing with Microsoft products. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Well, I, I have a burning question that I always want to ask you, and uh, I. Uh, so many of your friends, you know, very successful uh, people, you know, in academia, professors in f the famous university like yours. They all left the university and they joined the industry. And uh, you know, why are you not jumping ship and uh, you know, joining a company as well? And of course, you know, most importantly, you know, Microsoft. Right, right. Um, it's a choice I've made a few years ago. Um, Jeff Hinton asked me, you know, why don't you come to Google? And, uh -huh. and I said that I, would, I wanted to keep my lab and, and, and my own person as a, a neutral place uh -huh. where um, uh, many companies could engage with us and also uh, that I wanted to stay in academia to continue training uh, the, the people that we need for, for this revolution that is coming. Um, I like the freedom of academia. I like uh, brainstorming and working with students. They bring a lot of so much energy and, and you know fresh ideas. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to stay in Montreal, so lots of good reasons. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I think I see a lot of advantage uh, being university. You know, one of them is actually the average age on campus never changes. Every year you have students graduate and then you have new students coming. And the Montreal is such a lovely place. And I really, I really hope you know, I can visit you more often, uh, spend time there. We had a fabulous dinner with you last time. Right. We should do more. Yeah. Lots of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about your book. And uh, you, 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 you wrote this incredible book, and uh, I'm only halfway through myself. And uh, uh, I, I understand, I think I understand how difficult it is to write a book. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, very big book. So it must have taken a lot of time and efforts yes. by you and other authors. Tell us about this. We book. always underestimate how much. That, that's for sure. How much of the time that's goes right. into this. Right. Also, I must say that. Uh, it has been possible because of amazing co-authors, uh, Ian Goodfellow and Aaron Corville, uh, and I. I mean, we really worked together as a team on this, and I wouldn't have been able to do this alone. Um, we felt uh, so. We started this about three years ago, and it was very clear already that uh, there would be a need for this book, right. and uh, we were hoping to do it in like one year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's fantastic. So Ian was your student, right? Yes, uh, yes, fantastic. yes. So he started writing this after PhD? Uh, pretty much, yes. Pretty much, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, Yashua, I really look forward to uh, working together with you. And thank you so much for taking the time to come visit us. Uh, I, I look forward to having more opportunities talking to you and learning from you. Me too. And uh, thanks for having me. Of course.